Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 17 of Teaching Tales. I am once again your host, Brent Coley, and joining me today, I'm very excited about this episode because for anyone who knows me, I have on as a guest today somebody who has really had a huge influence on me as an educator, and that person is the one and only Tony Vincent. Tony, thanks so much, man, for, for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. I, I've been listening to your podcast and I'm, I'm always happy to talk with you, whether uh, it's online or I, we don't get to, we've never talked really face to face, hang out to hang out. So this, no, this, this is great. This is, I think this is our, our third, I want to say our, I think our third hangout or, or Skype call or something like that. But, uh, but we'll get into more like in terms of connection and stuff like that. Um, for anyone who is not familiar, anyone who's listening, my mom and dad, for example, although they probably do know about you because I've probably told them about you, but anyone else who is, who's not familiar with Tony Vincent, who is Tony Vincent? What does Tony Vincent do? Well, I, I used to be a fifth grade teacher in Omaha, Nebraska, uh, back when computers were just finding their ways into classrooms and then starting to go one-to-one. One of the one of the things that was pretty exciting was that I got to be one to one with Palm Pilots in uh, two thousand one, uh, and I, I've always been kind of a, a digitally oriented teacher, and I had a class website um, long before most classes ever thought of having one. Um, then I became my school's tech specialist, where I worked with kindergarten through fifth graders and their teachers. We did some pretty neat things. Uh, we had one of the first podcasts from an elementary school. Uh, Radio really Willow Web, right? Yes, yeah, Radio Willow Web, a terrible name for a little elementary kids to try to save. <laughs> Too many <laughs> W's and R's together there. <laughs> and uh, then uh, now for the last, oh gosh, 11 years, I've been self-employed and I've, I'm lucky enough to uh, work with teachers from all around the world. Um, I'm kind of a, a consultant, I guess, a guy for hire, and I do workshops and speak at conferences and when I'm not doing that, I get to be uh, at my home office here in Council Bluffs, Iowa, in my basement, uh, experimenting, playing, creating, making instructional materials, getting ready for the next presentation. Awesome. Awesome. And, and as we said, as I was telling you before we started recording, hit, and brought, hit broadcast, you put a bunch of good stuff out there. And and we'll talk about that, and at the end of the broadcast, we'll we'll make sure that we point any listeners to to your site because you have a ton of stuff out there. And when I approached you about what do you want to talk, like I, I I totally wanted to have you on the show because I know that I'm sure, like all of us, you've got some great stories to tell. And you suggested let's tell stories about connecting with other teachers, and I think that that is like the perfect story or theme, so to speak, to tell because I have connected with you virtually <laughs> whenever I present at conferences and things like that. I, I call you my virtual mentor because uh -huh. <laughs> I've never I've never met you. I mean, I mean in terms of we've never been we've never met face to face. As no, we haven't. Know, <laughs> is, we've never met at a conference. As far as I know, we've never even been in the same state at the same time. Yet through the magic of technology, we have connected and you and you have been able to share things with me that have greatly influenced me. But you you wanted to share, you said you had some stories about connecting with other teachers. So story away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess this this is a good story to start with. You know, I guess backing up uh, my class website, I thought was, was something that I was pretty proud of and that um, it was something my students contributed to, and it was a really good window into what we were doing as a fifth grade class. Uh, I had a, a section of our website called The Roving Reporter. And on that part, at once, one of my students every day was assigned to be the reporter, and they got to take our digital camera and take pictures all day long. And they actually had extra homework or an extra thing to do that night because they got to write up, look at the pictures, and write up an article about. Uh, what we did in school that day. So by the, as the school year goes on, we, it's, it was really a blog, but it was before I really knew about anything about blogging. So I did it the hard way through HTML. 
But we had this really nice um, daily log of what we did every day in fifth grade. And we published it for parents. We published it for ourselves as a memory and as a reflection. But it's on the World Wide Web. So we got um, teachers from all over finding this and, and getting a glimpse into our classroom. And I'd get emails, questions like, hey, that math activity looked great. Can you tell me more about it? Or we've done something similar. Let me tell you about that. And, you know, and I have an email sitting here uh, opened up on my desktop here from um, October 23rd, 2004. And it says, uh, Tony, I wanted to write you and let you know that your new uh, website looks great. I would love to infuse handheld technology in my classroom, but the funds in my district are extremely tight right now. I'm looking into grants, we'll see. Uh, I also wanted to say thanks. I'd written to you before to inquire about Rover Reporters and your daily log. I teach fifth grade in California, and I am pleased to let you know that my daily log page is up and running. Many thanks to you. And then uh, this guy, Brent Coley, goes on and on in, it, in his email. And, and I, got I thought that sounded very, I thought that sounded very familiar. <laughs> I was one of those teachers. <laughs> From 13 years ago. Wow. Uh, or, or, uh, yeah. And so I, that's, I, I keep all the email really that I've, that I've been sent. But I, it looks like you might have sent me a message or two before that. But that's the, that's the earliest uh, in my email search that I found. But it's great because... Um, I've, I've got to connect with you and with um, many other teachers uh, uh, with the same thing. That they'll see an idea, they'll take it, and then they show me where they've gone, making me a better educator in the process, because then I got to refine what I was doing. We were bouncing ideas off of each other. And, and this is before Pinterest or Twitter or mm -hmm. blogs had really taken off, so teachers were connecting through email. And, and it worked. <laughs> and you can tell yeah. when those connections are really strong because years and years later, I'm podcasting with somebody that I connected with, you know? <laughs> hey, exactly, exactly. No, and I, as, as soon as you started reading that email, I'm thinking, that, that, sounds, that, that sounds like something I think I, that, that I wrote you. And, and going back to your, your roving reporter idea, I, I took that idea and, and you graciously provided some of the resources and we adapted them to meet our needs in, in my classroom and kind of going back to what you said, the beauty of that is it was extra homework <laughs> in terms of, I mean, they, they had to write, they were the journalist for that day and had to write about it. But, yeah. but the beauty of it is they wanted to do that. If I had forgotten to put the notes sheet, cause we had the, all the rubric and here's the kind of things that you can do to make you're writing great transition words and things like that. If I had forgotten to put that on their desk that morning, they were coming to me saying, Mr. Cole, I need the roving reporter notes. And the great thing now is kind of like what you said is it gave a window into our classroom for the parents when the parents, well, what'd you learn in school today? What do kids typically say? Nothing. I mean, <laughs> when that's not what's happening, of course we're doing something, but every single day parents could log on in the words of the kids and find out what they did. And now that I'm out of the classroom and in administration, every once in a while, I will look back because there is still on mrcoley.com, I still have the entire year, every, virtually every mm -hmm. single day, here's what we did. So it's like, it's, it's a forever memory of what was my last year in the classroom like? What did we do on the first day? What did we do on December 1st? What did we do? And it's just, it's awesome. So, and that was because that was your idea that you freely shared. Was your website was Planet, was it Planet Fifth? Is that what Planet it was? Fifth, yeah. My, my students named it one year and then we kind of we kept the name year after year. But I didn't want it to be Mr. Vincent's classroom because I thought it's, this is featuring work of my students. So um, we picked a name that didn't, <laughs> that meant that, uh, I wasn't the only only person contributing. Nice. But, you know, to go back, another story, you know, I, I worked with great teachers at my school. They're, they're wonderful. But um, I'm guessing you worked with teachers like this, too, where we had a copy room and we had a really nice copy lady, Jean, and she'd copy anything you wanted. And then we all had a, she had this big table and she'd put our copies, you know, out on the table so we could pick them up when we needed them. So, uh and I made a lot of my own stuff, and I, I spent so much time in Claris Works. But uh, I would always share whatever I whatever was copied there. If somebody else took and made a copy, I loved it. I wanted to contribute. 
But there were a few teachers who instructed Jean to, uh, when they had copies of something they had made, to put them in their own mailbox so that they'd be separated from everything else because they are very protective of what they created. They did not want to share them, um, which I suppose is their right. But if I had taken that approach with what I did at Roven Reporter and like, I'm not sure and you can't take my rubric and, and, and I kept so many things secret, I wouldn't have, <laughs> we wouldn't have made the connection and uh, I wouldn't have got to see what you, you've done and your idea wouldn't have reverberated back to me and made me better too. Yeah, well, yeah, you said 04, I think is when I started that. I left the classroom in I think 2010. So six years times 32 kids. That's a lot of students <laughs> whose education was affected in a positive way because they got real life opportunities to practice narrative writing rather than just giving them some random prompt. It's, Hey, what'd we do in class today? Tell us what we did. And I mean, well, and, and now, especially now in my administrative role, we talk about collaboration. I mean, that's such, I mean, it's one of the C's. I mean, it's one of the big things that we're doing. And if you think about it, I mean, how many truly original ideas are out there now? <laughs> I mean, everything is a, is a derivative of something else and things like that. And gosh, to, to shield it, I, I'm so glad you didn't do that and are continuing not to do that and freely putting stuff up there uh, because, I mean, I can't even imagine how many how many people have benefited from what you have shared because just take me, you shared with me, I have shared with a whole bunch of people. Then you start getting that, that viral effect or the exponential effect where it just goes and goes and goes and goes. And who knows how many people have been affected because of what you put online. Yeah, well, in my search of emails for Brent Coley, um, not all of them were from you. Many of them were from people mentioning you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I saw Brent Coley do this and he said to contact you or, um, you know, so, somehow found out about me about uh, through you. And so I uh, just, just more, more of those spider web connections out there, you know? Well, and I, and that's, yeah, exactly. It's like, and I got, as you were saying that it puts me back to, I think it was Oh nine. You and I connected via, I think it was Skype. We were both guests on Jennifer Wagner's and I think Peggy George. Well, I think it was called Women of Web 2.0. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. It was, I don't even remember what the topic was, but what I do remember was at the end of that broadcast, toward the end of the interview, you asked me a question. You said, hey, Brent, are you on Twitter? And my response was, no. And Jen and Peggy and you, everybody gasped. They were like, oh, no, what do you mean you're not on Twitter? And it's funny because I proceeded to say something like, I don't have, I only have a flip phone. I don't have a, I don't have a smartphone and I don't, and I came up with all these excuses that you and Jen and Peggy and everyone immediately debunked and said, no, that's not a good reason not to be on Twitter. And I signed up right then and there through your connections. You got me like a hundred followers before the end of the night. And that conversation has completely changed me. And I don't know, would you agree? I mean, what has Twitter done for you professionally? Oh, Twitter, Twitter has, has been everything. Yeah. It's uh, uh, professionally. I mean, it, it, as somebody who's self-employed, it's got me jobs. People will see something I've tweeted and they'll say, hey, can you come to our school? Uh, yeah. And, and the connections, the ideas. I spend um, you know, at least a half hour every day on Twitter trying to figure out what's worthy of retweeting and what I want to send, send back out. And that process of curation, because um, you know, I have a real purpose, like I got to find out what I want to tweet about today based on what other people have tweeted. I've learned so much. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, I, I have said, I mean, <laughs> you're the reason I got on Twitter. You're the one who asked me the question and I came up with all those lame excuses why I wasn't. And now over the past couple of years, I'm presenting sessions. I've had the opportunity to present sessions at the Q conference and local affiliate conferences and things like that on 
Twitter for professional development. Basically, my job now is convincing other people to do what you asked me to do because mm -hmm. I can honestly say I have learned more on Twitter from, from the people who have freely shared resources than probably all organized professional development combined. Well, for since, sure. I completely since, since agree. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and, and things, for example, I mean, you and I are having a conversation now via the magic of Google Hangouts. I just went to the Lead 3 Symposium uh, down in Redondo Beach. It's basically a, a Q conference for administrators. So it's a lot smaller, about 300 people. And I was able to make face-to-face -face connections from people that I had interacted with on Twitter, shared resources with, like, oh my gosh, that's great, read their blog posts, and then I was able to meet them face-to-face -face and take that connection even deeper, was able to go to, to dinner with a group of people, and now they've opened me up to additional resources and their blogs and their podcasts and things like that that I would have never, I would have never been aware of that had it not been for Twitter. Yeah, it's every day I'm learning. I'm learning something new. It's uh, it's just yeah, just a, a constant stream of great information. And in fact, the the ISTE conference, the International Society for Technology and Education, um, I try I try to go every year, but it's kind of expensive, you know. Especially yeah. nobody nobody pays my way, so it, it it's kind of costly. And when I go, I'm glad I make those connections. But the years I don't go, there's a hashtag uh, not at ISTE. Not at ISTE. Um, yep. Jen Wagner has a Google group that she that she gathers together. Um, I probably learn just as much, or if not more, being at home, <laughs> following yeah. what's going on on Twitter. Um, people are chatting. We uh, Jen Wagner's even organized where uh, you can make your own ribbons that you put on a virtual name tag. Uh, you know, you don't get you don't get the face to face interaction, but there's still a lot of interaction going around the conference when you're not there. Even no, I I I I think I did one of those ribbons last year. I've never been to ISTE, and kind of along those lines, this year I was able to send five of our teachers to the California Q Conference, computer computer using educators conference, and before we before they were getting ready to head on out, we kind of got together because. I mean, Q isn't as big as ISTE. I mean, ISTE is, isn't that like 20,000 people or something? I mean, yeah. some obscene number. I mean, Q is like 6,000, which is still, that's a lot of people. And if you've never been yes. there, it's very overwhelming. So we got together and kind of went over the program schedule and everything like that. But one of the big pieces of advice, because I've gone, I think, 15, 16, 17 years now, is I told them, kind of going back to what you said with the not at ISTE hashtag, I said, do not be afraid to skip a session or two. If you meet somebody and you're having a hallway conversation about the session that you were just in, I mean, this is your principal saying, I'm giving you permission, not just giving you permission, I'm almost mm -hmm. encouraging you. If you're having a great, productive, collaborative learning conversation, a learning experience outside of a formal session, keep that going. And I, I would agree with you. I, I probably learn more in the hallways after sessions, like, like talking about, oh my gosh, have you ever seen that? I'd never heard about that. And then they'd say, oh yeah, I've done it. And then they start sharing stuff like that. And it's totally informal, totally organic. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's where the, that's where the real learning take, takes place oftentimes. Yeah. So, and the, the the other way around is we're talking about Twitter. Another um, kind of fun story is uh, there is a, a group of teachers who were each from five different locations around Australia, and this is back when iPod touches were kind of brand new in classrooms, and nobody had really gotten together to see how we could use them in schools. There was pockets of innovation, kind of like with Palm Pilots. So. They uh, be, the first time this this group of five teachers ever met in person was when they put on their first conference called Slide to Learn. You, know, you slide to unlock an iPod Touch. You slide to learn, and uh, I skyped in. I got to do uh, a presentation from from my home here in the Midwest to to the to the Australian conference, and uh, 
I guess it, I'd already kind of known them through Twitter. I got to make some stronger connections after Skyping with them and Slide to Learn was a success that uh, they got to repeat it several times in different locations in Australia. And they've invited me to that several times. So I've got to travel uh, halfway around the world uh, because of these connections. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, we have, at our school, we have professional learning communities. And for anyone listening, I mean, many schools now do. I mean, the DeFores, Rick and Becky DeFore, I mean, it did such great work with PLCs. And, and we have some great conversations. Every week we have time devoted to our grade levels, first, second, third, whatever the grade levels working together. So five teachers, for example, in my second grade team have time to sit around and share resources, collaborate, bounce ideas off each other, create common assessments, create projects together, things like that. With the magic of, not it's not magic, <laughs> with the beauty of what yeah. we're doing right now, it's like, I always say, the, the quote that it's often said that the smartest person in the world, in, in the room is the room. And I always like to say, especially when I do like, trying to get people on Twitter, why settle for the room? If the yeah. smartest person in the room is the room, why settle for the room when you can have the world? And Twitter puts the world, I mean, you follow a hashtag, whether it's TLAP, Teach Like a Pirate, or EdChat, or Learn Like a Pirate, or CA EdChat, or, I mean, there's so many great hashtags. You just, you just sit, like you said, 30 minutes a day, you just sit in front of that Twitter feed, and you're gonna see things going through your Twitter feed. We have a we have a, a whiteboard in our staff lounge that every day I have I have started putting kind of inspirational quotes, encouragement for the day, and things like that. And so many of my teachers have said, "Those are great. Like, thanks for thanks. That way, I really like those. I look forward to seeing what you're going to have. Where do you get those? Twitter. <laughs> every sing it's it's all Twitter. I every you, single day there's ones going yeah. through that I just. Like, ooh, there's, there's one. I just, I, I like that one and just save it for later. Save it for later. You know what you could do is um, just screenshot that and put that up on the bulletin board so they see that it came from a tweet. That's a great idea. I did that actually, one of the recent ones, because it was, it was a picture of what a, a student had done and it was, it was way too much for me to try to duplicate. So, but that's a, that's a great idea to, and what I do is I always try to attribute who said it? So, for example, today Danny Steele is the one who who quoted. It was his quote. So I've got it's a quote, and then from Danny Steele at Steele Thoughts. So it's at his Twitter at his Twitter yeah. handle as well. So, but no, these the connections again. I think you are living proof of what technology can do for me and for anybody listening. Um, <laughs> share. I mean, kind of like you said, I mean, we don't want it to be like those teachers that you had that you used to work with <laughs> that said, oh, I, this was my crossword puzzle yeah, that I this made. Is, this is mine. I made it. Uh, nobody else can have it. Yeah, because it's like, who is this about? Is it about you or is it about the kids? If it's great, don't you want to share that? Shouldn't exactly. you share that? Would you be prepared to look that parent in the eye and say, no, I'm sorry. She's not in my class, so she doesn't get the awesomeness of what I just created. That doesn't make any sense. So, <laughs> but uh, no, Tony. I, again, publicly, I mean, you just read an email from 04 of me thanking you, and I just want to. I was so stoked about this because this is like my fanboy, <laughs> my fanboy episode because <laughs> it's like I'm getting to talk to Tony Vincent, the one who truly you have impacted and, and I and I like to say in, in presentations that I've done, it's like you have probably impacted my growth as a as a, as an educator more than than so many people that I personally interact with and things like that. And I always like to say, and I've never met you. I mean uh -huh. I mean face to face, we have never we have never interacted face to face. I always like to say if we ever are at a conference together, lunch is on me. Because that's the least I can do <laughs> for what you have done in terms of so graciously sharing your resources. So, thank you, Tony. I mean, you are you are the man. 
So on it, and it, well, and and it's great to great to hear this. I, when I I try to lead by example, and um, and I, and I and I post a bunch of things, and on Twitter I can see there's retweets and likes, but um, sometimes unless you make these kind of connections, you don't know if that idea actually took off where where things go, and so it's it's nice to hear that you know the the, the time that I that I take to do a lot of these things um, pays off. And I know that you, it does. <laughs> and I, I, I've seen what you've done and, and you've put a ton of time into what you've done from, I remember your podcasting uh, templates for your, for your classroom podcast that I used for Colecast, my classroom podcast at the time. I mean, you put so much time into that and I was the same type of <laughs> person like with my classroom website, I would put a ton of time into it and it was nice to hear when somebody actually got something out of it. And yeah. it was so cool when somebody would email and say, hey, wanted you to know I found your website. I'm now doing this in my classroom. It's like, okay, it makes all that time um, worth it. So somebody else listening, another thing is if you find something, if you've made a connection, if you find something, tell that person thank you. <laughs> because I think sometimes it would be easy to think, should I, is anyone even reading this? Is anyone listening to this? Yeah. Should I even bother continuing to do it? And you want to let them know, yes, keep doing it. It's awesome. Yes. Keep it up. <laughs> the person on the other side will love hearing that. It'll, yes. it'll make, make their day. But it also is something else that, that helps when, or that I guess is, is good for me as I share, just as I, I've encouraged teachers a lot to give their students an audience, like I did with Roman Reporter or with podcasting. Because when you have an audience, when you kind of have an identified audience, when you kind of know who might be looking at your stuff and thinking about it, it makes you do a better job, right? And just as publishing a, a website, it's like, oh, well, you know, this is for my class, but also there's going to be other in the world looking at this. I got to make it good. So anytime I share something, I want to make it good. And I, I, I share things I use myself. So I'm, I'm helping myself by making it even better than I would have. Your proofreading is, yeah, your proofreading is going exactly. to be so much more because I think Rushton Hurley had that great, great quote, like, if your work is going to be seen by the teacher, if it's going to be seen by the world, they want it to be good. If it's only going to be seen by the teacher, they want it to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And, and I, going back to what you said, I mean, I remember when we did our podcast, again, my podcast was because of you, <laughs> totally based on Radio Willow Web. But first day of school, I'd pull up iTunes, and I'd pull up Coleycast, and I'd pull them and say, there's your work right there. Your work is going to be right alongside whoever the musical group at the time <laughs> was back in 07 or 08 or 09 yeah. or whatever it was, and just seeing their eyes light up, or when we would pull stats from the website and say, wow, let's see who's looking at our website right now. Oh my gosh, there's somebody in Australia looking at our website right now. There's somebody in Britain looking at our website right now. It's Japan looking at our website right now. Hey, Billy, Logan Reporter article, look who's going to be reading what you're writing. Somebody in Australia could be reading what you're going to write. Billy now is going to go home and really do a good job because he wants to put forth his, put his best foot forward. Exactly. Well, so I, when I was tech specialist, I worked with, worked with a group of second graders. And uh, when, we, when we would put together Radio Willow Web, our podcast, uh, each episode was done by a different, different small group in a different grade. Well, these second graders had worked really hard on a podcast about respect. And we had worked really hard about brainstorming topics and then using those planning sheets to plan their segments. And I was recorded out of order and I, I'd like to record the host last so that he could kind of hear everything and, and be able to introduce the different segments. So we had everything recorded. It was, it was the, the morning and Spencer was, was, was the guy he had been practicing and it was time for him to, uh, to record with me. Well, uh, his teacher comes to me in, in the hallway in the morning and said, Spencer um, has a problem. Like, He's worried, like, why isn't he coming to me? <laughs> and he said, well, he's afraid you're not going to let him record today. So I started, you know, I immediately tried to finish her sentence saying, Spencer didn't practice? Like, he's told me that he's been practicing the script at home and he's not ready for it. And 
No, 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 that, that's not it. He, he's been practicing, but um, uh, he lost his front tooth last night. <laughs> and, oh. and he doesn't sound the best. He's, he's very airy and he's really worried about what he'll sound like on the podcast. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that is okay. We, we, we will work with that. Like still send him to me today, say I really want him to do it. So he came in, he recorded, he, he sounds like a, like a second grader missing a tooth. Uh -huh. But I thought that really showed that Spencer cared a lot about the craftsmanship of the product. And he knew that we had a, we, pretty big audience for Radio Willow Web, and he didn't want to let me down. He didn't want to let the audience down by not doing his very best work, even if it was something he couldn't help, <laughs> not having sure. a front tooth. Yeah. Well, I just, yeah, the power of authentic audience, of a global audience, and even if it's not global, even if it's maybe your grade level or something like that, I mean, that's, but now, yeah. and there's so many, I mean, back then, like you said, you had to do HTML and all that kind of stuff. I mean, now you've got, I mean, we were, Seesaw and all these different apps and things like that 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 make class dojo and stuff like that that just with a couple taps, boom, broadcast your broadcast your work to maybe it's just mom and dad, maybe it's everybody, depending on yeah. how the teacher and the parents agree to do that. There's so many opportunities to just a share button away. <laughs> exactly. That little air that little box with the arrow going up. That's all that's that's all it takes. So, well, Tony, we, we will wrap this up. But um, thank you. This this has been this is not disappointed. So I really, really, really appreciate it. Hopefully, people uh, listening got something out of this. And again, moral of this story: the, the purpose of this podcast is to number one, entertain with some 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 good stories, but to encourage and inspire. And I would say I always like to say there's somebody online right now looking for what you have. Everybody has something. There's somebody on Google right now searching for that lesson that you have, that project that you have, that idea that you have. Share it. Get it on Twitter. Get it on a blog. Get it on whatever, Facebook, whatever you choose to do, Pinterest, because somebody, it, it could completely change that person's trajectory and could, and by association, change an entire classroom for uh, worth of kids. So... Yeah, so and then my call to yeah. action will be the other end of that is that um, you 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 find something great online and uh, a teacher's put out there. Contact them, email them, and and say that you appreciate it, and um, maybe send some ideas back. But uh, you never know where that connection might go to. Amen, amen. Yeah, absolutely. Encourage that person. Hey, loved what you did. Thank you for doing it because that could totally fill that person's tank and keep them going. Spur them on to continue to post and share more stuff. So yeah. yeah, great, great, great point. So speaking of great resources, for anyone who wants to look up Tony Vincent, where can we find? I mean, I, I know you're a lot of places on the web. Where can we find you? Well, my home base is learninginhand.com. Uh, if you Google Tony Vincent, depending on the day, it'll be my website or the singer's website, but uh, <laughs> learninginhand.com. And then that has links to my Twitter. Uh, where I share uh, at least two, I think, pretty awesome things every day. And uh, then I, I've been working, and this has been a year and a half now, but um, Instagram has been really my, my new method of sharing. And I share um, a few, I call them friendly, glanceable graphics for ed tech uh, on Instagram a, a couple a week. And so They're uh, awesome. Uh, those, are, those are awesome. Guys, if you are on Instagram and you are not following, uh, it's, it's at learning in hand, right? Yep. Yep. Learning in hand is the, I mean, there's, there is just, yeah, really friendly, easy to see graphics sharing awesome, awesome things. So, all right, Tony, thank you. And, My pleasure. It's uh, great to talk with you. It was very good to talk with you. Really enjoyed it. And thanks for listening everybody. Uh, hope you enjoyed it as well. Hope you were encouraged uh, and inspired to get out there and share, connect with people. You don't have to be in the same town. You can get out there and connect with people and it can transform your practice. As always, if, if you have not already done so, be sure to subscribe to Teaching Tales in iTunes or Google Play. And if you like what you hear, give us a review, uh, give us a like. We would appreciate it. Thank you, Tony, once again. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Mom, Dad, thank you for listening. And until next time, have a good one. <laughs>